everyone, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel, What Cass Read. Today we are continuing on with this whole seven day posting week and we are beginning my 2019 like book series, book reflection lists and all that stuff. Today we are going to start with my most disappointing reads of 2019. Now most disappointing does not necessarily mean it was the worst book that I read because there's actually some surprisingly higher ranked books in here. But these, for whatever reason, I was expecting more, didn't get what I wanted. So the first book, this might come as a shock, but this is also not going to be the only time you see this book mentioned this week. So the first book that I want to mention is Holy Sister, written by Mark Lawrence. This book I rated five out of five stars. So take this with a grain of salt, because I did actually absolutely love this book. But it was also one of my most disappointing. I have very conflicting thoughts about this whole book. It could be because this was my most anticipated read of 2019. It was my most anticipated new release. I, as soon as it came out, got on an audiobook and listened to it that day. This is the third and final book of the Book of the Ancestor trilogy. Book number one, Red Sister, and book number two, Grey Sister, were some of the best books that I had ever read. We ended on such a strong note in Grey's Sister, so it kind of like set itself up to be impossible to top, and then that's what I feel like we got with this book. And typically I, I actually like hate that. I actually hate when authors do that, and I understand, like there's just some pieces of information that you probably just cannot fit no matter what you want, no matter what your editors think, it's just you can't fit it in into the larger story. But this book is like 300 something pages. It's the shortest out of all of them. And I just don't understand how the novella bound could not actually be fit into Holy Sister because I think it could. So I read this book before I read Bound and you're absolutely right, Mark Lawrence, that I should have read Bound before I read Holy Sister. Um, because when I started this book, I could tell there was something I was missing. You know, I just started, I felt like, wow, there is something happened here and I don't know what it was, and that something was what happened in Bound. There was like pivotal character moments that happened in Bound. Again, just not sure why it couldn't have been put in this one. I don't want to get into too many spoilers because, again, third book of a series. There was also a very, very main character, Abbas Glass, that, again, what we left off with in Grey Sister and what we started with at Holy Sister, I feel like there was just chunks missing to her story and I needed that to be put in here. And I was like, this is only 300 something pages. You sure you couldn't have put Abbas Glass more of what I wanted into this book? So I, the ending was perfection. The resolution for all of these characters was perfection. Um, the mysteries that we solved, big bad, you know, like all of that stuff was so perfect. And it's just so weird to have such a big gripe about this book. So this was one of my most disappointing reads of 2019, even though it was a five star read. Okay, this is Kingsbane written by Claire Legrand. This is book number two of the Imperium trilogy. This is actually a really, really recent addition to this list. And I gave this three out of five stars. So if you haven't seen my December wrap up, this is in there. <sighs> this is again a sequel, so I can't really get too much into spoilery stuff. But I was disappointed in this book because I absolutely loved Furyborn. Furyborn was one of my five star reads of 2019. I have a whole review on that. I absolutely loved it, gushed about it. Furyborn was something that kickstarted my reading again for the whole winter season because I had a very, very slumpy beginning to my winter reading and Furyborn single-handedly got me out of that. So I was expecting a lot from Kingsbane. And Kingsbane, I guess, took the things I didn't like about <laughs> Furyborn and just kind of put it into a 600 page book um, because all of the like grand mystery, the grand adventure that we had in Furyborn, um, and what these characters were going through was boiled down to a lot of romance scenes in Kingsbane. I'm not opposed to romance, but I'm pretty disappointed that I guess Riel's timeline was purely romance, and Elena's timeline I enjoyed much more than Riel's timeline this go around, but there was still pretty heavy romance, and that's why I was disappointed. It was just like a lot more um, angst than I was anticipating um, because I thought we were gonna go somewhere with this like whole Blood Queen and Sun Queen mystery and I feel like maybe this like experienced middle book syndrome I don't know but I was pretty disappointed in it because I was just so hyped 
on Furyborn. I'm still going to pick up uh, Lightbringer that has been announced as a 2020 release. Of course I have to finish up this trilogy because I want to see where these two storylines intersect. There's some cool action bits in here, um, but the romance, the romance just kind of took it out of the enjoyment for me. This is Vengeful, written by V.E. Schwab, also a disappointing read of 2019, but also like, is it that disappointing to me because I didn't have high hopes to begin with? So this is book number two in the villain series, the first one being Vicious. Absolutely loved Vicious, and I had to read this, I think, for the Book 2 Best FF Awards, and I was not kind to it. I did DNF this book. In my Goodreads review, I said this is the superhero sequel that I didn't ask for, that I didn't want, but that the studio was trying to build up on the hype from the first success, um, and then they spit this book out. I absolutely didn't care about the new characters. I didn't care about this new villain. I really just wanted to get back to Victor and Eli from book number one. And if we had another Victor and Eli situation, that would have been more for me. That would have been what I wanted. Now, because I DNF'd, I don't know if we get more Victor and Eli in the end, but I don't think so. <laughs> I was just pretty upset about this. Like, I feel like we could have had Vicious and left it alone as a standalone, and that would have been perfect. But then we came out with Vengeful and kind of ruined the whole thing, and that's why it was a disappointing read for me. Another disappointing read um, is Neverwhere, written by Neil Gaiman. And I'm kind of conflicted about this one as well, because uh, this year I read three Neil Gaiman books. This was the third one, and this was also the book that I was just like, I just don't know if I enjoy Neil Gaiman. Neil Gaiman was an author that I really wanted to make work for me. Um, I read Norse Mythology, I read Stardust and DNF Stardust, and then I read Neverwhere. I did finish Neverwhere. I think I gave it three out of five stars. Um, firmly in the middle. But the reason why this was a disappointing read for me is because, again, I just like, his setups for his stories sound like something I want to read. And then when I get into it, I'm just like, oh, it's all right. This is also my sister's favorite Neil Gaiman book. This is one of her favorite books. And I just like couldn't connect to it the way that other people were connecting to it. And I just think it has everything to do with Neil Gaiman's writing style. So this was like a disappointing disappointment to me because I had so many people say they loved it and that this was a favorite of them. And I'm like disappointed to disappoint them kind of situation. This is the illustrated edition. Really enjoyed the illustrations. Like this was just like kind of creepy. So it follows a young man named Richard Mayhew who um, on the eve of like potentially proposing to his girlfriend or maybe he was proposed, I don't know. It was right at the beginning of the book. <laughs> but he is about to go on this date with his girlfriend. The date is kind of interrupted very forcefully by this young woman that he's not really sure, but she just looks completely disheveled and she looks like she's kind of out of place and he stops everything that he's doing on this date and he goes to help this young woman. And by helping this young woman, he ends up getting wrapped up in this whole London above versus London below um, chase and uh, adventure and all that stuff. I did enjoy the London aspects of it. Everything was kind of very tongue-in-cheek with the locations and the names of places, but I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> we had to take a pause. Um, I wanted to film these videos without Luna because, you know, sometimes she can like jump up and get a little in the way, so I put her in the room, right? Um, apparently this is what she's doing <laughs> right now. Poor puppy. Puppy, I'm almost done with one more video. Still got another one to film after this. Okay, let's get back to the disappointing books. <sighs> this book, this is The Trail of Lightning, written by Rebecca Rowanhorse. This is the first book of The Sixth World. This was a debut novel that was a part of the debut category in the Book to Best FF Awards, and I did finish this whole book. I did not DNF it, but boy did I want to. I ended up rating this two out of five stars. I was pretty disappointed in this book because it was nominated for the Book 2 Best FF Awards, so I expected it to be better than I felt like it was, but I also feel like I'm one of the few people on BookTube who also don't like this book. This is a urban fantasy story following a young woman interweaving Navajo myths and legends. That's all fine, and I feel like I would have wanted to like that, but also you have to be good. I can't just like you because you are telling the story about the Navajo Nation in this like apocalyptic urban fantasy setting. So yeah, anyways, it's a 
apocalyptic urban fantasy setting, this young woman, um, she has to like, what does she have to do? Oh, oh yeah, 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 she's a, she's a monster hunter and she has like supernatural powers. We were trying to force her to be this like super tough, rough and tumble, she's gone through so many things and I didn't care about her. So it wasn't, wasn't my thing. I gave it two out of five stars. I won't be continuing with this series. I'm probably the only person on booktube who also felt this way. This one was such a disappointment to me and I also like feel really bad about holding this up as like a disappointing read of 2019. This is A Big Ship at the Edge of the Universe written by Alex White. I was so looking forward to this book. This is book number one of, oh what is it, the Salvagers, Salvagers series that's written on the spine. I wanted to love this book because Jess from Jess Nevertheless, this is one of her favorites, oh my gosh. And she like absolutely loved it, loved the sequel. She like, she is the reason why I bought this book and I just feel so like I'm disappointing her personally <laughs> by not liking this book. A washed up treasure hunter, a hotshot racer, and a deadly secret society. They're all on a race against time to hunt down the greatest warship ever built. Some think the ship is lost forever, some think it's been destroyed, and some think it's only a legend, but one thing's for certain, whoever finds it will hold the fate of the universe in their hands. I DNF'd it. I don't know if it's a forever DNF, but it's definitely a right now DNF. Um, because I read this on audiobook and I also vlogged it. So it was one of my first two vlogs that I ever posted. You're looking for an audiobook, I am telling you this is not it. This is not it, move on, find something else. Read this in the physical form because the audiobook narrator was awful. And I don't say that about a lot of audiobook narrators, but this audiobook narrator completely ruined a lot of things for me <laughs> because I, I just kept thinking like, this is your job to read a book and I can't tell one voice over another. I, I didn't like it, wasn't good, not, not good at all. But I also feel like I didn't know what was happening a lot of the time. And I also kind of found out that I don't like my science fiction and fantasy to mix or just mix in such an obvious way. I felt like a big ship at the edge of the universe, I wanted science fiction, but the fantastical elements and the magical elements that were brought into this book took me out of the science fiction and I had a hard time balancing the two in my brain. So that's like a me thing. I acknowledge that, that's my own fault. Okay, I didn't have a particular order for all the other books, but I am here to tell you that this was my most disappointing read of 2019. This is Circe written by Madeline Miller. This is another one that I feel like is gonna hurt a lot of people, the fact that I'm holding this up. I read this for the BookTube SFF Awards, but I actually read it like at the beginning of 2019. And this might have been one of the first two books that I picked up. So this was a book that I had been looking forward to and it wasn't what I wanted. This is the uh, retelling of the myth of Circe uh, and the Odyssey, but from the perspective of Circe the witch and not from the perspective of all the male characters. What we get is a goddess who is living her life and we get this beautiful like island witchy foresty magical vibe. She's very sensual. She has relationships with other gods and with humans and I don't know she lives her banishment in such a like a beautiful way but when I was reading it I was like I wish I could get lost in this story the same way that other people are getting lost in this story because all I'm getting out of it is that this is just like a Greek mythology name drop. Like any person in the Greek pantheon that could be mentioned in this was mentioned in it and had some interaction with Circe. And I just was like, okay, okay. I also wrote in my review that like, I shouldn't be too hard on the fact that it felt like it dragged on for forever because Circe is a goddess. And why would time matter to her? But time mattered a lot to me and it just felt like no reason to keep going with this. The only reason why I did was because I read it on audiobook and it was beautifully written. Um, if anything, it does make me want to read A Song of Achilles because so many people are like, well, Song of Achilles is much better than Circe. And I liked Madeline Miller's writing, which is why this was such a disappointment. It wasn't one of my hated books, but it was the most disappointing book that I did read for 2019. There we go, my list of disappointing books for 2019. Please let me know what you think about in the comment section below. I feel like I've hurt, I mean, nobody's gonna take it that seriously, but I also feel like I was disappointing people with these disappointing reads and that hurts me. 
Uh, booktube's such a weird thing sometimes. But anyways, let me know what you think about these books in the comment section below. Did you love them or were you also disappointed by them? Um, we're gonna continue on this week with my whole 2019 book series. We've finished up the most disappointing, but there still is to come the best all of my DNFs, my 2019 stats, and we also do have the 2019 book awards, which is something I look forward to every year, and that is vastly different from the best books. So make sure you stay tuned all the way through the end of the week. Hope you're having fun. Follow me on my social media if you want, Instagram, Twitter, Red, same as this channel. Subscribe to my channel if you like what you see here. You guys know how these videos end. I'll talk to you later. Bye.